Medical people say he's not going to damage it anymore. It's just a matter of how much he can stand. Turns and pitches the ball to John Tippins, the tailback. And Tippins turns it upfield and pounds to the 35-yard line. 15 yards on the first play. Let's check in with Todd Harris. All right, Keith, the question all week in Pullman, Washington is how many braces does it take to get Jason Gesser ready to play? Apparently, the answer is two. Jason made a five-hour drive because of fog to Seattle, Washington, to have this brace custom molded to his leg. Now, this is a brace, according to trainer Bill Drake, that got Jason through practice Tuesday and Wednesday. However, on Thursday, he tried a new brace, ironically enough, called the Bledsoe brace. No relation to Washington State grad Drew Bledsoe, but it's the brace that gives him more mobility as we have a very exciting play, Keith. I'll send it back to you right now. Mike Bush is on his way to the end zone as Colin Henderson took a pass to the side. A lateral pass threw it downfield. Bush broke free and clear and cantered in. And Colin Henderson continues his remarkable success at throwing the football. Yeah, it was a lateral from Jason Gesser back to Colin Henderson, who led Mike Bush perfectly down the field. Mike Price says there's no holding back, there's nothing to play for, but the biggest game ever here at the Rose Bowl on January 1st, and he's coming out shooting. Henderson now will go out and hold for Drew Dunning on the extra point try. That play went for 66 yards. The snap was high, the kick is good. And so, Mike Price goes deep into the playbook for one that probably runs some eyebrows up on the UCLA side because Bob Toledo is famous for his momentum changers. Yeah, it's a simple lateral by Gesser. He fakes the handoff to Tippins, makes sure the ball is a backward pass. And now look at this great throw by Colin Henderson. Six times now in his career, he's thrown a touchdown pass. He is 10 out of 11 for almost 500 yards. The big old Mike Bush, all six foot six basketball player of him, was at a full loop when he caught the ball. And so Washington State breaks on top by a seven to nothing score in the first 37 seconds of the football game. And Keith, not only will that pick up the uh, spirits of all the Cougs, but this man right here, Jason Gesser, knows that he's got a seven point lead after just two offensive plays. That will help him out a great deal, take a lot of pressure off. And a pretty good defense to back him up. Adam Holliday will kick it off now for Washington State. Tyler Ebell and Wendell Mathis are waiting for it. And it's at the five-yard line, Ebell. Tyler Ebell, who's been a big story this year himself, comes back to the 30-yard line, and he's taken down by Adam Holliday. There the Bruins will have it. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Rocky Mountain Cole Coors Light. Hold oh, down easy. Discover card. It pays to discover. Chevy trucks. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And AT&T. AT&T Wireless brings you in life, your mobile life made better. Freshman, true freshman, Drew Olson at quarterback, stands up, throws quickly, throws hard to the sidelines, and missed his man, Junior Taylor. Pass was incomplete. Olson is 6'2", 211-pound freshman out of Piedmont, California, and uh, he was thrust into the starting role when Corey Paws went down with a broken leg, and he stood up pretty well. He's at 71 passes and only one pick. He will stay on the field at quarterback today as long as he's doing the job. Matt Moore is the backup, and there's no sign that they're going to play more regardless. This time, it's Manuel White, the big guy, 240-pound sophomore, who pounds it to the 35 and a pickup of five yards. The UCLA uh, backs and receivers, Tyler Ebell at tailback, as we told you. Ebell needs... 86 yards today to reach a thousand for the season. Mike Seidman, their tight end, is a great one, and Taylor starting at the split end position is very fast. The offensive front is a good one. It's a very good run blocking offensive line. And Olsen's pass thrown down the middle and thrown high. It was intended for his uh, tight end, Mike Seidman, but he threw the ball very hard and uh, threw it high. A couple of injuries for UCLA in the receiving core. Tab Perry is out. So that means Mike Seidman's going to have to have a big day along with Craig Bragg. 
but Drew Olsen, his first two balls thrown extremely hard, not giving his receivers a chance at all to make the catch. Well, he's in a full pump right now, I'm sure. Nate Pixie is in. DuPont standing at the 20, should hit it about the 25-yard line, and Marcus Trufant, who is a premier defensive back for Washington State, waiting to receive it. There's a little bit of heat on him, but he gets it out of there, and it's a good kick. Trufant takes it, steps away from the first man, second man, third man got him at the 30-yard line. So at 13:20 uh, to go in the first quarter of play, the Bruins have it. They fought. The Cougars had it. They scored. They get it back for the second time, and leading seven to nothing. Let's continue with the lineups for Washington State. They didn't give us time uh, to do it the last time. Now they come out for this offensive set with five wide receivers and a shotgun formation for Jason Gesser. Passes away down the middle. The pass is completed to Mike Bush again, and Bush will take the catch at the 35-yard line. The backs and receivers, John Tippin started at tailback. He had 14 yards on his first carry, the first play. This is a very good core of receivers they have. There's 136 catches for Darling, Riley, and Bush. The offensive front, Roach and Armstrong, all conference people. It's a young group, too. The only seniors among the eight are Roach and Hunt. They've got considerable depth there right now. Jermaine Green now checks into the backfield. He is the swifter of the backs. Had a big year. Guess his pass is away. Thrown in a hurry because the pressure was on him. And uh, he got rid of it quickly. Chiller was the man applying the pressure. The UCLA defensive front, Dave Ball, quick for a big man. Ten and a half sacks. Rodney Leslie is back from a broken foot. And when he's healthy, he gives the defensive front really good push. Serious speed at linebackers for them. Havener's the youngest, a redshirt freshman. Ricky Manning at cornerback leads the DBs. First team all-conference, the only senior, and he's making his 44th consecutive start today. Third down now and five for Washington State. They go back to the shotgun. Swing it out here. Ball thrown out to Jermaine Green. And Green coming out of the backfield is going to have the first down, but there's a penalty flag thrown by the field judge on this side. Marcus Reese made the tackle. The referee is Jack Fullyard. It's a holding call against the Cougars. Well, obviously, UCLA is going to accept that penalty of 10 yards and back them up because they had picked up a first down. Holding on the offense. The penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul, third down. And this is exactly where Mike Price does not want to see his quarterback in third down, obvious passing situation. Yes, sir's mobility is extremely limited today because of that right leg injury. And regardless of whether he's in the game or Matt Kegel, Phil Snow, defensive coordinator for the Bruins, is going to come after both of them. It had been a five-yard gain. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. So right now it's third down and 10, Washington State, at the 30-yard line. And Jason Gesser now is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. The Bruins have got eight men in the box. They're trying to get to it. So far they have it. The ball is thrown, and it's intercepted on the ricochet by Danny Manuel, and he's headed to the end zone. Touchdown. Ball was tipped by Brendan Chiller, and it was picked off by Emmanuel, and he scored the touchdown. Keith, you talked about the Bruins loading the box. Well, they got Gesser to change the play at the line of scrimmage. They dropped back eight men into the secondary, rushed only three, and watch how Gesser trying to force the ball in here to DeVar Darling on the outside. It's tipped up in the air by Brandon Schiller, and then Emmanuel is in the end zone. Great play by Phil Snow's defense as they come up with the first big play in a long time for UCLA. Jared Page threw the big block to really get him in there, and he knocked Gesser upside down, but Jason brought it off the field. So here's the effort to tie the game by Nate Pixie. They picks it up and through there. So we're all even at 12 minutes to go in the first quarter of play. And we've had two big moments of excitement so far in the ball game being played at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California.
And in the old chess game, one and one, huh? Well, UCLA was fooled by the lateral pass by Henderson to Bush, and then UCLA came back, faked the blitz, dropped back eight men, and got rewarded with Emmanuel's interception. So the chess game is going to be a great one all day long. I think it will, too. 7-7 seven, seven ball game here between Washington State, the visitor, and UCLA, the home team. And Fixie kicks off for the Bruins. It's at the two-yard line with Jonathan Smith coming up the middle of the field. He's across the 20 and out close to the 24-yard line. Tomorrow, John Saunders and Terry Bowden will be in Times Square Stadium to reveal who's in, who's out of the Bowl Championship Series. The Big Buck Games. Don't miss the Tostitos BCS Selection Show tomorrow, live at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, here on ABC Sports. So, let's see here. Guesser's coming out again. He started. This will be his third possession now. In a 7-7 ball game from his own 24-yard line. From under center, turns and hands the ball away to Jermaine Green. And Green finds a couple of yards, and that'll do at the 26. We talked about how Gesser's wearing a brace on his ankle and on his knee. And you can see he's just not 100%. He's probably not even 60%, but his heart is in at 100%. He was just fooled by the interception by the uh, Bruins' Ben Emanuel. You can see how tender he is. He not really step into the throw as much as he normally does. Second down and eight. Green uh, is coming off of a rather severe groin injury suffered in the Washington game himself. Ball is thrown outside. And these receivers for Washington State all have pretty good mobility. That was Jerome Riley. He is a senior from Arleta, California, and uh, he's very close. In fact, looks like he has with the spot the first down. Well, it, this is just painful to watch. You, you just heart goes out to a young man who's competing so hard and putting all the pain behind him. But he's so good at floating around in the pocket when he's healthy, and his back pedal is good. But when you take a shot like that, you're not going to be around all day long. No. He won't last if he takes many of those. It is, however, a first down for them, and he goes back on the center. With Green the tailback, and Jermaine has it trying to get to the outside. He has great speed if he gets to the outside, and he's across the 40 to the 41-yard line. That's a pickup of six yards. He talked about his leg injury, Keith. Uh, his loss in the Apple Cup game against the Huskies was as important as the loss of Jason Gesser was because it took away their running game. He is uh, about 90% healthy for today's game and they are going to run him until his legs fall off to take the pressure off the quarterback. They're playing for the Rose Bowl. Basically, that's, that's the fundamental thing that Washington State is trying to do today. If they can win, they go to the Rose Bowl. If they lose, USC goes to the Rose Bowl. This is Green being hemmed in right about the line of scrimmage. Maybe lost a half a yard or so on the play as he is taken down by Marcus Reese, who's been a force over the last half of the season. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team, Chevrolet making a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Keith, I think Ben Emanuel likes playing against the Cougars. Last year, he had a 29-yard interception return for a touchdown. You got five wideouts in the ball game again for the Cougars out of the shotgun. And up the middle comes the blitz. The ball delivered quickly to Jerome Riley. And Riley's going to have about nine yards on the play. They were blitzing. I mean, coming up the middle. Matt Ware like a bullet. And uh, Gesser saw him coming and had his man. And hit him right on the hand. If you're going to blitz, you're going to open some holes. And like the Mike Price had told us last night, if they do blitz, as we expect them to do all day long, they'd better cover our receivers. And they did a great job of that, keeping Riley short of that first down. It's fourth and one, and Kyle Bustler is in the punt for the Cougars. Craig Bragg is waiting for the Bruins just inside his 15-yard line. That was a little bit off target. He spins it up into the air, and it is caught, fair caught, at about the 28-yard line by Craig Bragg. So not a particularly good punt. Only 28 yards for Buster.
Jason Gesser, who has been the car celeb for the last two weeks, ever since the, the Apple Cup game, which the Cougars lost. They had a first and goal on the one-yard line in the fourth quarter and couldn't put it away. Here come the Bruins now in a 7-7 ball game, and the Mercedes Lewis is at the bottom of your picture, a big, tall freshman, and they're throwing it to him, and he caught it. Jump ball on the sidelines. He jumped up over Jason David and made the catch. And the Bruins pick up a first down. Jason David, of course, was the young man who was involved with one of his teammates and suffered an injury to his face, a broken cheekbone. And he's back in the lineup now and had pretty good coverage. It's just that Lewis, who stands a 6'6 and weighs 240 pounds, won it over a 5'8 defender. 10-inch difference, 70 pounds difference. First down, Bruins from the 44-yard line. They're going to run it with Ebell. Tracked down in the backfield and brought down. Short of the line of scrimmage by Jeremy Williams. Keith, a lot of talk about the quarterbacks, but I think today's game's going to be decided by your favorite players. Both these teams must rely on their defenses this afternoon, and more specifically, on the big uglies up front. The guys down in the trenches. For the Cougars, they must follow their bell cow. Ryan Long, who has 13 sacks on the year for Washington State, to get back here to the Rose Bowl on January 1st. They must bow their neck and hunker down this afternoon, Keith. And second down and nine. Here comes your reverse. Now they're throwing it down the sideline. We've got a man wide open. It is John Dublovac, Manuel White, coming out of the backfield to make the catch. And White takes it to the end zone, and the UCLA Bruins have the lead. So that's in your face, Cougars. So much for hunkering down and bowing your neck. This is fun. Trick plays all over the place. Trick plays executed perfectly. Tuberback now is three for three thrown this year. All three have gone the distance. Tuberback, who has run the reverse in times past, but he stopped, hitched it, and put it right on target. And now the Bruins for the point. Griffith, now I mean, uh, it's fixing. Fixing for the point. And it's 14 to 7, UCLA, with 7 minutes and 33 seconds to play in the first quarter. Both Mike Price and Bob Toledo like to add a little spice to their offenses, and they paid off today. This is the second play of the game. The lateral back to Colin Henderson, and then the 66-yard strike to Mike Bush, perfectly in stride, put the Cougs up 7 0. Then, after an interception returned by Ben Emanuel, how about the Bruins on the option here? Fake the option, give it to Dubrovac. He sets his feet, finds Manuel White behind the secondary, 55 yards. And <laughs> we've got a 14-7 Bruin lead. Dubrovac, who is coming off a concussion, he'd struggled with it for about a half a month. And uh, now he's, he's well and healthy and uh, exulting in his, uh, his moment. He's gonna go over and get a New Jersey. <laughs> Number 15, maybe. Just grab it right off, John Shara. So from the 35-yard line, Fixie will kick it off. And Washington State people waiting back around their five for it. He normally knocks it into the end zone, and he's done it again way back there. No return on this one. Monday night, Ricky Williams will lead the explosive uh, Dolphin offense against Brian Urlacher and the Chicago D. Bears and Dolphins, Monday night at 9 Eastern Time, 6 Pacific on ABC. It's the 30th anniversary of Miami's 17-0 season. Perhaps the greatest team in NFL history, certainly the only undefeated team in NFL history. Pretty hard to have one these days, isn't it? It was hard in those days. <laughs> <laughs> They go work out of the shotgun. They try something behind the line of scrimmage. Some little play action. Jermaine Green trying to come back the other way, and he's going to get taken down at about the 16-yard line. He started right. There was no place to go there, and uh, Gesser goes down, and you can see what happens when he is knocked off of his uh, feet. J Jer Jermaine Green's going to get his quarterback killed. Gesser just being an athlete and a competitor saw the running back reverse his field after the handoff. I'm not sure why he did. There was a big hole right up the middle for Green. He decided to jump to the outside. Now, Gesser sees him. He's going to try to help out. Matt Kegel got up, but he has yet to start warming up. I would think that now he's got a ball, and now they're going to warm him up. They go back to the shotgun to give uh, 
guess there's a little more room. The ball is oh, almost intercepted. My goodness. It was right in the hands of Spencer Havener, and Havener could have walked in. And right now, Mike Price has got to make a decision to pull Jason Gesser, get him out of the game for a little while. Put Kegel in. Is another third down and long situation coming up. The uh, Cougs are going to be, the Bruins rather, are going to be coming with the pressure, and here comes the other quarterback. Kegel is coming in, and Brian. <laughs> And now Gesser is, uh, as you see, leaving the field, drawing the applause that he certainly deserves. And Kegel now for his first snap from his own 16-yard line. No pressure on him. The ball is thrown on target to Jermaine Green, and Green coming up the field gets back to about the 24-yard line where he takes a pretty good lick from Marcus Reese and Brandon Chiller. And again, a good defensive series for the Bruins. Phil Snow's outfit setting the pace setting the tone right now controlling the running game pressuring the quarterbacks and then dropping back into a zone containing this high powered pass offense we could see that uh, Jason Gesser could probably handle the assignment of throwing the ball but once he started they started pummeling and rolling him around on the ground that's a low line drive kick taken at the 38 yard line but great drag drag trying to get to the outside does and finally taken down at about the 36-yard line. And Washington State special teams better get to it because these Bruins have burning speed, and finally Don Jackson brought him down. It's, it's tough to fault Jason Gesser for trying to help out Jermaine Green on that aborted draw play, but at some point, Jason's got to realize that, uh, hey, you reverse your field like that, you're on your own. I can't help you on one leg. Now he's hurt on the sidelines. He'll... Knowing Jason, he'll definitely be back in the game, but maybe not for a while. Here are the Bruins literally knocking on the door again. First down at the Washington State 36-yard line. Drew Olson comes back, sacked at the 45. Isaac Brown comes flying in and nails him down on the 45 for a big loss. Let's check in now with John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. Keith in the MAC Championship. Byron left, which added again. Drops back, stands in there. Protection and fires this one 28 yards to Denaro Marriott for the touchdown as Marshall has regained the lead 35-32 with about three minutes left. Keith. Well, these guys are rolling up some points on it today, aren't they? Miami and the Virginia Tech and now Toledo and Marshall. And here's Olsen back. A little shovel pass. Uh, the ball carrier, Tyler Ebel, uh, almost spun free. But uh, one of the Cougars who, uh, on the way by, got enough of him to take him down. Looked like Ocelano. Ebel's right here. Olsen's going to go by him and then pitch the ball forward. It's the old shovel pass. Takes the place of a draw play, basically. But the linebackers right there, wording 51, had Ebel in man-to-man -man coverage and was there for the stop. And it's third down and 16 for UCLA. Washington State defense stepping up a little bit in this series. Olsen wants to go deep, goes to the sidelines instead, and the ball is wide and uncatchable for Craig Bragg. So they get some heat on Olsen. He throws it wide, and the Washington State defense has a good series. And it's zone coverage. Watch as David just goes back into an area, reads the quarterback, and then breaks on this poorly thrown ball by Drew Olsen. So Jason David playing with a broken cheekbone that is now mended. Nate picks the end to punt. Marcus Trufant waiting for it. He's standing back at the 10-yard line. Dixie will try to get air under it and hang it up there. They're trying to tease him offside, but they're not going to do it. Here's the ball now. It's going to go back to Trufant at the 6-yard line. Bruins had good coverage and might have been able to kill it deep, but they're going to be deep anyway after a fair catch at the 6. The aerial pictures you're seeing today are courtesy of Goodyear's newest blimp, Spirit of America. Based in Carson, California, Goodyear built its first blimp in 1925 and currently operates three airships. The view from up there today is, uh, is hampered a bit by a considerable haze that's accumulated. Jason Gesser, believe it or not, has come back out there at quarterback. From the six-yard line, he's at quarterback. Under center, turns and hands the ball off. It goes to John Tippins, who is the bigger of the running backs at 221 pounds, and he picks up a yard. Here's Todd Harris. 
Well, Keith, Coach Mike Price came to the sideline and talked to Jason Gesser, made him wear his own headset. He talked to the folks upstairs, talked to Bill Drake, the trainer, said he has re-aggravated that injury, but they're going to let him try to go. He says he's good to go. They made him walk a little bit. He says he wants to play, and he can play. So here he is, back in the game. Well, I don't know. Well, this <laughs> part of the field, Keith, I think it's important that uh, that Gesser is in there because of problems with Kegel and the cadence against Washington and all kinds of problems. Pippins uh, popping out of there and popping it big out across the 15 to the 16 but there's a penalty flag thrown by the linesman back around the line of scrimmage and that one's going to come back I think. Oh it's against UCLA it's offside to amplify on what Dan just said about the presence of the experienced quarterback in be careful country here's what Mike Price said last night about the quarterback's role. The success of the play, every single offensive play, depends on the quarterback. How he presents the play to the team in the huddle. How he breaks the team and gets them to the line of scrimmage. How he, the cadence, how he gets them started. The snap from center, getting the ball secured and putting the right guy's hand. All those things are taken for granted. And he's got all those things. They declined the offside call against uh, UCLA it'll be third and one it could have been second and four that's a tough decision Keith it you is. Yes, it is. you only have one down now to make it to pick up one yard that's a decision that Mike Price made he wants third down and one here and who's he got in there at the big back position he's got Tippins a 222 pounder and he gets it and looks like he's got the first down that's a classic confrontation between a running back and a middle linebacker though as Marcus Reese read the play and got in on the tackle but not before Tippins picks up the first down. Tippins got the start today because he's a senior from Santa Monica. And, uh, has really performed quite well. Four carries 25 yards his first one went for 14 yards. Washington State comes up now out of the shotgun with three wide outs. Going down the middle of the field, the ball is caught at the 40-yard line by Troy Vienemann, the tight end in front of Jared Payne. Very athletic freshman tight end. He also does the snapping for kicks. And he also has a quarterback that's not afraid to throw the ball down the middle of the field with touch and anticipation. Look how soon that ball is thrown, nice and soft, so Vienemann can adjust to the ball and make a spectacular catch to get his team out of trouble. Put it on the 41 yard line with a first down and put Jermaine Green in as the deep back. He gets the ball trying to bounce to the outside and does. And the Bruins get him at about the 46. Spencer Habner, a redshirt freshman linebacker who has had a tremendous season for UCLA, made the tackle. Time remaining in the first quarter, 224. All pack 10, offensive guard. Derek Roach right here with a nice block on the outside against Matt Ball, number 49. That pins him to the inside, and now Green is one step away from a big one. He is a very fast big man. He's got it again, gets to the outside, got a block on the corner. And he's going to have another Cougar first down on the UCLA side of the field at the 42-yard line. UCLA safeties play so close to the line of scrimmage both Jared Page and Ben Emanuel almost form a nine man front nine in the box so if Green could get to the outside then they're going to force the corners Matt Ware and Ricky Manning to make touchdown saving tackles. You can see Emanuel blaming himself for taking a bad pursuit angle. UCLA Bruins leading 14 to 7. Pass interception and a quick play. Thrown by a wide out to a running back. Gesser back. Penalty flag is thrown. Gesser's pass is completed. Inside the 30-yard line to Devard Darling, his first catch of the day. But let's see about the penalty flag that again was thrown by the linesman. Gesser's starting to feel more comfortable, more into a rhythm. He's getting better pass protection too, isn't he? Yes, he is. One of the Bruins shaken up on defense the play, Jared offside. Page. The defense decline. is offside. They'll decline that and uh, move the chains. There's Page shaken up. Look right down the line of scrimmage. It might be uh, 
Sean Morgan here, Steve Morgan rather, on the outside who had that hand in the neutral zone. Pretty good protection there for uh, Gesser too. But that ball comes out of his hand so quick. And he's so, he's so effective operating out of the shotgun. The only problem with the shotgun is it limits your running game. And if you're going to take pressure off the pass rush and off of Gesser, you're going to have to have him under center handing the ball off to Green. Jared Page is up now and walking off the field with a little help to kind of guide him. It looked like he probably had his bell rung because there was a massive collision between all those big people when uh, they came together. And uh, Page is not a gimme. He's 6'1", 200 pounds. Washington State's ball. It's first down just inside the 25-yard line of UCLA. The possession started back at the Washington State 6. And it started with Jason Gesser at the quarterback. Ramo comes in at that safety position now. Gabriel Ramo for UCLA. And Gesser looking around as changing his play again. Gets it off. Ball thrown down the middle. It's caught inside the 10 yard line by Jerome Riley. Yeah, that all goes back to what Mike Price was saying about the experience and the savvy of Jason Gesser. He was burned by UCLA when he threw the interception for the touchdown to Ben Emanuel because they changed up their coverages. This time he wins the guessing game. He sees that they're in a zone and he drops it in right over the linebackers heads to Jerome Riley. And that sets up the Cougs inside the 10. First and goal at the eight yard line. Kevin Grant is in the secondary as a nickelback here for UCLA. He goes at figures. They're throwing, and they are throwing, and it is overthrown. He was going to, he was trying to get a jump ball between Mike Bush, 6'6", six, six, and Ricky Manning, 5'9", and he threw it away, threw it too far. Yeah, and, and Ricky Manning really played this well because he played him with outside shade. That's where Bush wanted to go. You want to throw that fade to the outside and let the uh, tall receiver out jump the smaller defensive back, but if Manning had the position from the get-go, that forced Gesser to throw it away. And it's second down and goal. Now he's calling the play. And he's throwing. He's got Darling. Touchdown. Devard Darling against Ricky Manning. And Darling lost him in the dust. That's the 11th touchdown reception this season for Darling. That ties a Washington State season record. Keith? Gesser saw the coverage of Manning playing outside shade. That allowed DeVar Darling to cut across his face. That time Manning, who is usually most effective in bump and run, was playing off, and he let the big receiver get inside. Drew Dunning for the point. It's good. And we're all even again at 14-14. And you saw DeVar Darling touching his chest and pointing to the sky. That's for his brother, Devon. DeVard Darling with his 11th touchdown reception of the year. Big guy, 6'3", 205. Now watch what he does after he catches this ball. He touches his heart and he points to the sky. His twin brother, Devon, died 22 months ago after collapsing during off-season football drills at Florida State. That led to DeVard Darling transferring. He was looking for some place to go. Mike Price's son is uh, an assistant coach with the New York Jets. And uh, he told his dad that Darling was shopping. They called him. He got interested. He came out. He loved it. And he stayed. And he's had a great season after redshirting for a year. And the medical uh, okay was given to him, obviously, after a full year of examinations. The return by the UCLA Bruins will be out to about the 20-yard line by Tyler Ebel. So a 14-14 ball game with 29 ticks remaining on the first quarter clock. Jason Gesser was four out of five for 66 yards and the touchdown. That's 24 straight games for Gesser throwing a touchdown pass. So the Bruins take over at the 20. Drew Olson, 6'2", 210 pound freshman out of Piedmont, California is the quarterback. Manuel White is the deep back single back in here. And they turn, and 
and give it to him, and he's got good blocking on the right side, and is going to pick up seven yards on the play. That right side of the Bruin offensive line is very strong with Mike Safer at right tackle and Steven Fiera. These two guys right here, that's exactly where the Bruins are going to attack. Mercedes Lewis, number 19, acts as a lead blocker, and Yosef Isayev with the pull. That's one way of neutralizing this great defensive line of the Cougars. We played one at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena in a big ball game with Washington State trying to win their way to the Rose Bowl. 14-14 tie. As we go to the second quarter of play, UCLA owns the football at their own 27-yard line. Second down and three. Tyler Ebel is the tailback. Drew Olson back to throw. Shovel pass. Loss on the play. Tyler Ebel just had no place to go as he was decked immediately for a two-yard loss at the 25-yard line. Ryan Long, who's made that play there, Keith. What's at stake in the ball game? We indicated a lot. Pac-10 championship for either Washington State or USC. Cougars win. They're the champions. The second BCS Bowl berth for the Pac-10 since UCLA had uh, USC had the high rating and Bob Toledo's future at UCLA. Those are the immediate things, but there's a trickle down that goes way down the bowl ladder. Olsen with great protection. Pumped it, pulled it down, takes it to the 30-31 and gets the first down for the Bruins. Olsen in his first run of the day makes it pay. Six yards, good for a first down. And it was a good decision by Drew Olsen not to throw the ball late across the middle. So many times young quarterbacks will make that mistake, and many times when they do, it's picked off. But he didn't have a far to go. He saw what he needed and picked it up. On the 31, Corey Paws, who went down in the Cal game with a broken leg. Standing on the sideline, watching the freshman, trying to help him. Both of them are going to be pretty good, I think, in time to come. There is no room up the middle for that carry. I mean, it just fell on him. Yard, a yard and a half on the play by Tyler Ebel. And let's spend a moment again with John Sunder. Thank you. When I think of here at the Toledo, I think of the Mud Jeans. <laughs> Jamie Farr. Baseball, <laughs> baseball days. Second down and ten. Oh, man. Pressure that time. I mean, they came like a rocket. It was uh, Will Dirty, who is a big, fast freshman linebacker. He's 230 pounds or so, but he can run with almost anybody on the field. And he's going to hit this gap right here, number 51. Six foot, 235 pounds, unblocked. And also does a nice job of hanging on to the ball as he gets rocked back for the loss. Back to the 25. It'll be third down and 16 now for the Bruins. Having a little trouble deciding where they want to go, but now they get it straightened up. There's a drag in motion. Got two men to the wide side of the field. The heat's coming, but they get the ball off to the tailback, but he's got no place to go because he caught it off balance, and Mahuli Davis was right there. Let's give some credit to Bill Doba, defensive coordinator for the Cougs, as they uh, give up the first down to Drew Olson on the quarterback run now. Next three plays all backwards. The pressure on the screen pass, and there's Mawuli Davis from his middle linebacker spot and Steve Cook to clean him up. And the Bruins are punting with Fixie. Trufant waiting back at the 45-yard line. They should get pretty good field position out of this. Rusty Williams is the snapper. All right, a little high. Balls away. Nice kick through front. At the 41, gets a little help on the corner. Oh, look at this. He's got a lot of help and comes all the way down inside the 25-yard line. A whisker from going all the way. It was Mike Seidman who finally got him. Keith, he got a lot of help, and he also helped himself. True Font, who has a long of 52 this year goes 37 with this one watch the stiff arm coming up that stiff arm right there just chills that defender and then it's down the sideline 41 yard punt by Fixie but a 37 yard return by Trufant well you talk about a right jab to the forehead 
And here they come with Gesser turning and handing the ball away to the tailback Jermaine Green. And he's got a yard. Having Rodney Leslie in that defensive front again for UCLA is a tremendous asset. It's a good group. It's Williams, Morgan, Phillips, Ball, and uh, Boschetti, and Leslie. Keith, yeah. whenever you see a team that their leading tacklers are all their linebackers, that means that defensive line is doing their job controlling that offensive line. Get the ball. Out of the shotgun, Gesser. With time, lets it go down the middle. Touchdown. At the weight. To make sure you have possession. It's Jerome Riley over Jabril Ramo. Oh, it doesn't take the Cougs long to pay off a wonderful special teams play by Marcus Trufant with this high lob in the end zone. Nobody anticipates his receivers better than Jason Gesser. And how about that pass protection? Nobody around the one-legged quarterback. Dotting for the point. Good. So at 10.46 to go in the second quarter, the Cougars go back to the lead, 21 to 14. They led early on. Bruins came back to 14-7. Now it's 21-14 Cougars. Washington State to the lead, 21 to 14, kicking off. Adam Holliday, big leg on the senior. Carries back to the one yard line. Coming out to the 19. No, oh, the ball comes out. Fight still on. Officials jump in there because here's where a ball can be lost. Right here. The Cougars say they've got it. They do. Ball came out, got away from Matt Clark. And so the Bruins uh, turned it over. Matt Coley is showing you once, once his hand goes up, that's it. Carrying the ball in his left hand. A little hesitation there is going to get him killed. He gets hit high and low. And then Eddie Robinson, number two, is it the first Cougar to get the ball at the bottom of the pile. Costly mistake by Matt Clark. And there's a Washington State player down at the bottom of that melee. Somebody got crunched. Can't tell who it is. But the Cougars get the football at the UCLA 18-yard line where it'll be first down on the turnover. Up along the kickoff return. They just took the lead by a score of 21 to 14. Bob Toledo, his team, 20 turnovers this season. In the last two games, they've had six. And you can see his, uh, the, the, the misery he's going through with it. But there's been a lot of things uh, to trouble Bob over the last month or so. And uh, there's been a lot of if ands, and buts, and a lot of haranguing on the man. And he comes into this game clearly, publicly admitting that uh, he feels that there's a lot of pressure on him. And there are those who say, well, he will be relieved of his coaching job. We don't know that. Nobody knows that except the people who have to make the decision. It is Ira Davis, who is a member as a linebacker of the special teams. And he was the one who was shaken up. He was the one also involved in the altercation and caused it with Jason David. He was the man who injured David. And he was suspended as long as David was not able to play. As soon as Jason David was healed to play, Ira Davis was returned as a sub and a member of the special team. So here are the Cougars now with Gesser looking to throw. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Couldn't find anybody available. And the Bruins jump him in the question now, will he be able to get up? And the answer is yes. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. This week's question, who holds the Pac-10 single season for touchdown passes? Single season record for touchdown passes. Ball is back on the 23-yard line. That was a loss of five yards. Second down and 15. 
Jesser gives it to Jermaine Green going to the outside. Got a block on the corner. Got another block over that they helped him to a pop. A 12-yard pickup on the play. Mike Bush was the man that gave him that block to get him around the corner. And they always tell the running backs, you're going to have to make somebody miss. The good speed and power of Jermaine Green gets good blocking at the point of attack the block right there by Bush now he's got to make Matt Ware miss Ware goes in for the along the hard shot here nice job here by number five Bush on the safety Jared Page now Ben Emanuel has to come over and keep Green out of the end zone ball is on the 12 yard line they've got to go to the eight for the first down on third down they go back to Green and that's not the play that is not the one Spencer Havner ate him up they're going to the short side of the field, and uh, the Bruin defense just outnumbered him and got him. Steve Morgan also playing a lot of defensive end here today. Number 92 coming from his tackles by great job of getting penetration across the offensive lineman's face. This is an excellent spot here for Washington State to fake a field goal, though. This is where they want the ball on this hash mark. Drew Dunning be a 30-yard try. The snap was high, the kick is low, and good. Woo! Dodged the bullet because that snap was high and the kick was very low and just barely escaped the grasp of the Bruin lineman as they rose up. Cougars by 10, 24-14. Drew Dunning with 105 points this season has set a new school record for Washington State. He passes Steve Broussard's 104 points that Steve scored back in 1989. And here's Adam Holliday to kick it off. Takes it down a yard deep in the end zone to Jason Harrison. Harrison had a concussion and we're surprised to see him returning kicks, but after what happened to Matt Clark, he's in there and he brings, uh, brings it out to the 25-26 yard line. Keith, it's time for the uh, Chrysler passing playbook. Any good pass play has to start with good pass protection. Watch the lane and how far away this offensive line keeps the Bruins from Jason Gesser. This allows him to stand tall and then lob the ball high to his receiver, Jerome Riley, for the 21-yard touchdown catch. And Keith, I know you agree that nobody throws the more catchable ball for a receiver than Jason Gesser. You get the lanky athletic receivers who can go up and make a play. They really profit from that kind of pass. Birds try to run, two yards on it, and then with White carrying. Manny White's a big guy, 6'3, 243, and from Canyon Country, which is a little bit north of Los Angeles. One thing the Bruins are going to have to do is they're going to have to get their wide receivers and their talented tight end, Mike Seidman, involved in this offense. No catches for Craig Bragg or Junior Taylor or Mike Seidman yet in the first half. I think Marcus Trufant has become very familiar already with Mike Seidman. He's pretty much in his shadow. Trufant's pretty good. Olsen's pass is away and it's picked off. It is on the way back the other way to Jason David. That's his seventh interception of the season and he's inside the 15-yard line. Jason David, who gets up in the morning about three feet off the floor, was predicting that I'm going to get some more because I've been laid up. He had six and eight games, and now he's got seven. And he's just backpedaling. Now the receiver slips. That's Bragg. That cost Drew Olsen the interception because if Bragg doesn't slip down, he gets his body between he and the defender. But Jason David, how opportunistic, and what a great way to come back to the lineup picking off his seventh pass of the year, his 10th career interception. He gets a lot of them because of Marcus Trufant, but he gets a lot of them on his own as well. Ball is on the 13-yard line. John Tippins is the single back for Washington State. Gets the ball, the big guy going up the middle, and he'll take it inside the 10 to about the 7. The last three drives, Washington State started at UCLA's 22, 17, and now 13. They should be leading. Bush to the right side, the big tall guy. Darling and Riley come to the bottom of your picture. Gesser hands it off. 
It goes to Tippins, and Tippins trying to get around the corner. The Bruins uh, too quick for him. Uh, ben Emanuel is there in a hurry. Gained about a yard or so on the play, down to the six, which third down. Third down and three from the six. And this is where the Cougs are so good with Gesser throwing the soft lob to either DeVar Darling, who's 6'3", or Mike Bush, who's 6'6". We've seen how the Bruins have tried to counter that with playing off and outside shade. See what they do here. The Enemon, the tight end, came out. They put in a wide receiver. They've got four wide outs now, and Gesser's shopping. Got to throw it. Throws it away. Pretty good coverage by the Bruins secondary. They went to the nickelback alignment and they covered those four wide outs very well. So it'll be fourth down. Keith, they played them off a little bit. And that took away the fade route. That's where Gesser wanted to go to begin with. And then he did do some shopping. You can see his mobility is just not there. And he had to throw it away. Phil Snow is a good defensive football coach. Don't ever doubt it. Drew Dunning is in for another field goal try. This from 23 yards. He's already set a school record of 105. It's a fake. Dunning's going to throw it. He's got a man wide open, and they don't make it. He had him wide open. All he had to do was lob the ball into the end zone, and he underthrew John Tippin. Keith, I talked to Casey Dunn about this play earlier in the week. Mike Price bought off on it. He liked it. He thought it would work. But he said the one thing Dunning has to do as a right-handed thrower, he must stop, set his feet, and throw. Here is Tippin's. Tippins will go into the corner here. Now the pitch back from Henderson, but Dunning doesn't set his feet. He instead throws up a lollipop, and Tippins can't come back to get it. If he sets his feet right here, he's got an easy touchdown. So instead of a big lead, they sit on 10 points. And let's see what this does to the Bruins. It might jack them. You never know. This is Manuel White. Uh, not much. Our Pacific Life game summary has to do with UCLA's two scores this afternoon. Jason Gessler's pass is tipped up in the air by Brandon Chiller and then returned by Ben Emanuel, 41 yards. And then the trick play. John Dubrovac, his third touchdown pass in as many throws this season. He hits Manuel White for the score. It is second down and still 10. No gain by White on the last effort. And Olsen back throwing, gets some heat. Ball is away. Trying to set up a screenplay for Junior Taylor. Taylor with burning speed. Turns it upfield for a first down, and the Bruins are off the hook. The gain is up about the 18-yard line. That's what UCLA has to do. Pretty cool customer, Drew Olsen, with a lot of pressure on this play. He's got to take his time to allow the uh, screen to develop. But there's the pressure from Didi Acilano. Now watch how fast Junior Taylor is. He's going to almost fall down here. Still gets up. If he doesn't slip there, he might have made it all the way to the end zone. He can burn. Man. Ball's uh, just over the 18-yard line with Ebel. He's out to the 21. That minute, that tackle for Washington State. Tonight, conference championship, BCS bid on the table when Oklahoma gets together with Colorado. In the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ABC Sports, the class of college football. Colorado Buffaloes, they wobbled a goodly bit coming out of the blocks this year, but sorted things out. There they are playing for the championship again. Second down and eight. Ball thrown outside, goes to Keith Carter, who is a big tight end. And the Cougars jump on him. Carter is a load. He's 6'4", 240 pounds. Both and those tight ends. Mike Seidman's a big guy as well. This is a big part of UCLA's game plan today. This quick three-step drop by the quarterback, getting the ball outside to the human pinball. Keith Carter taking about six shots from the Cougs. The Bruins need the run after the catch by the receivers. We saw Junior Taylor, and that time Keith Carter gets very little. Fred Shavey just missed that one, too, as he went by. Third down and five. Bill passing, going to the outside with it. And got away. That's Junior Taylor. 
And Taylor makes a couple of big plays, and here's UCLA moving the ball down the field to midfield. Jason David was the defensive back trying to make the tackle, but Taylor shook him off. And I think David might have been getting just a little bit greedy here. He's going for the uh, angle to pick that one off. Then he misses the tackle. Then you get a, another look at that great speed before Eric Coleman can come over and stop Junior Taylor. 47-yard line for UCLA, their side of the field. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. 24-14 lead, Washington State. Ocean pitches it, they hand it off to Bragg. Bragg's going around the corner. One man missed him behind the line of scrimmage, but the coverage is pretty good as they come up with Pat Bennett leading the tackle. We invite you to join ABC Sports Christmas Day for a spectacular NBA doubleheader following our pregame at 5.30 Eastern. The Celtics and the Nets in a rematch of the Eastern Conference Finals, but it's a long way from that. At 8.30 Eastern, Shaq, Kobe, and the Lakers will battle Sacramento, and that's becoming a pretty tough rivalry out here in the West. The NBA on ABC, oh yeah, we got hoops. How about that Laker comeback last night? 44 points, 44 to 15 in the fourth quarter. Amazing. Sacramento has really been boxing some ears out here. Time called by the Bruins. Time remaining first half now is 2.40. And the Bruins trying to mount a threat. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Saunders, Terry Bowden, highlights analysis of a lot of things going on today on this final Saturday of the regular season. Plus, you'll get to cast your vote for play of the year. And we'll have a look back at the career of our boss, Bruno. Second down, nine. The ball is on the 49, still on the UCLA side of the field. Drew Olson. Going back to throw it, going very well. He's going deep down the sidelines, and it is incomplete. Intended for Craig Bragg. There was double coverage back there, but he put the ball on Bragg's hands. Coleman and David running with him, but it was a heck of a throw by Olsen. It was a perfect throw by Olsen because he squeezed it in before Coleman could get over from his safety spot. Watch 27 run after this ball. This is a flat-out dropped pass. Both hands on it before contact came. Rough afternoon for Bragg. Minus two yards rushing, no receptions. Third and nine, Manuel White now is your single back. That's Bragg in motion. Coming over to join Taylor. And Olsen getting some heat now, and he'll go down. He'll go down at the 43-yard line, and the Bruins will have the front. And we'll zip off to New York and visit with Johnny. Oh, man. They're using the scoreboard, all of it. <laughs> On fourth down, ball skips back to Pixie, but he gets it out of there and a beautiful kick. Leave it alone, let it go. And it's going to go into the end zone. They come out to the 20-yard line, first down for Washington State. 57-yard punt by Nate Pixie. ABC Sports presentation of college football. Brought to you by Chrysler. Drive equals love. FedEx. Round International Online or Express. Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. Sprint introducing PCS Vision. Clearly a whole new way to look at wireless. And Aflac. Ask about it at work. Well, Jason Gesser's back out there. Broken leg and all, he's gone the whole half. They run the ball to the right side with Jermaine Green, and he gets nothing on the right side. Earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Who holds the Pac-10 single season record for touchdown passes? And the answer, Ryan Lee. 1997, Washington State won the conference championship and went to the Rose Bowl. Leaf had 33 touchdown passes, and he's on the sideline today. Big Ryan Leaf. He hadn't missed any meals either. <laughs> Did that make the comeback as a key lineman? <laughs> Elliott running the ball again with Green trying to come to the corner. He's going to be a yard short of getting back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll bring up third down 11, and here's Todd Harris. All right, thank you, Keith. With Ryan Leaf, Ryan, this is the field you play your last college football game on. What have you been doing and a chance to see you back in the NFL? Uh, no, uh, you won't see me back in the NFL, but I'll be uh, to plenty of these games to root on my uh, 
my fellow, my coach, and uh, and Washington State because they're just doing a tremendous job. Let's talk about the quarterbacks here. Jason Gessler, a gutsy performance, and your cousin out there as the backup. What do you think today? Well, I think Jason has just pretty much solidified himself. Probably, you know, he's the best quarterback ever at Washington State. But what he's done and brought this team to a different level. And uh, Matt, Matt will get his opportunity next year. And uh, I'm really happy for him. All right, big play, Keith. Back Jermaine up to you. Jermaine Green breaking free, running down the sidelines. at one man with a chance to get in. They don't get in. There are no flags behind him. It's a touchdown, Washington State. 80 yards for the big back. Eighty yards. He, there are several Bruins had their hands on him, but they didn't wrap him. And he kept chugging away, and suddenly he was gone. It's a little draw play, and once he gets to the outside, breaks the tackles. We talked about his speed. We just saw his speed. But right about here, it's a good move. The power to break through that very weak tackle. And then how about 80 yards? He had a 75-yarder earlier this year. That's a huge play for the Cougs. And the kick is good. And as you watch Jermaine Green go down to the sidelines, I don't know what you did, but this is what Ryan Leaf did. He just finished a conversation with Todd Harris. And suddenly he sees Green coming. He went right by him. Touchdown. I would think that's the answer to your question if he's fully recovered from the groin pull that disabled him in the game against Washington and I think the answer probably is yes. Nine touchdowns this season 80 yard run a big block by Scott Lundy to get him on his way and it's a 31 to 14 ball game and it could be 38 to 14 if uh, Drew Dunning could throw a forward pass. <laughs> throw any kind of a pass. Onside kick is not going to go 10 yards. He whipped it. Adam Holiday. He whipped it. It was one of those onside kicks. I think he's going to kick it to himself after 10 yards, and he hit it six yards. So he gives uh, UCLA with uh, 48 seconds to play. He gives UCLA a chance to stick it in the end zone from around the 40-yard line. I mean, I know things are going your way, but uh, this is ridiculous here. The onside kick is going to be to Holiday. He's a big guy, but smart to cover it up there. Let's give him that much at least. UCLA has two timeouts in great field position because of this uh, questionable decision by Mike Price and horrible execution by Adam Holliday. Well, I'd kick that thing all the way out of town if I could. And will now next time. UCLA is in a position to score. 48 seconds remaining. And Olsen back is throwing. And he's going for it right now. And he's got a man down there. And it is touchdown. There you go. How silly it is to pull a play like that and give them a chance. And they cash it in. And Jason David had a chance to make a play on this underthrown ball. Junior Taylor just blew by him, but Olsen underthrew the ball, and David was there to make the play when the ball goes right between his arms. Look at the speed of Junior Taylor. David checks out where the ball is. David T Taylor has to slow down, makes a sensational catch under pressure. He's going to be a great player, Junior Taylor. Boy, he can really run. All right, here are the Bruins back to make a game of it. Cougars had a 31-14 lead, tried that uh, onside kick thing, and they whipped it. And in one play, they stick it in the end zone, and here's your point. Good. So 31-21 now as uh, I thought a silly call was made and gave him the chance. Well, the Bruins now, having had that gift, going to go to the clubhouse a mile high and only trailing by 10 points, unless they get something else here with 41 seconds to play. Keith, they could be trailing by a whole lot more than that. They've given up two. Yep. Special teams. Fixie will kick it off. We'll put it back on the tee. There's no wind. I don't know how it fell off. Maybe it was a little earthquake. A little tremor. Huh? I don't think Bob Toledo will try an onside kick here, but you never know. Well, he's trailing. I mean, I can see doing that, but not when you're leading. <laughs> That's unbelievable, Keith. 
You can uh, put a man on the moon about 30 years ago or so. You can't keep a football on a little orange tee. The flag is not moving. No. Trade in the tee. See? Uh, Mir Zephyr. 41 seconds remaining. Well, he didn't get all of it, did he? Down to the four-yard line. And the return to the 20. And up to about the 22. The Washington State now with uh, Gesser coming out again. Will possess the ball at their own 22-yard line. 21 is where they put it, actually, with 35 seconds remaining in the first half. Not bad for a guy playing on one leg. But special teams and, and, and really decisions <laughs> have uh, cost them two touchdowns. Out of the shotgun. Gonna run it with Tippins. Tippins is gonna be knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, the Cougar, uh, the Bruins were in the Cougar backfield before Tippins ever got turned up field. Now again, with Gesser out of the shotgun, they're gonna be able just to run a couple of plays. One of them, the draw play. We've already saw how effective that could be with Jermaine Green. That time, Tippins had nothing. Bruins were looking for the draw. And now, they're looking to go to the locker room. They're going to run out the time with a halftime score of 31-21. Washington State leading the UCLA Bruins. And here's Todd Harris with Coach Mike Price. Well, you can smile about it now, Coach. I know special teams are near and dear to your heart. Would you like to have that onside attempt back? That was uh, not called. That was a miscommunication. A severe, huge miscommunication between the coaching staff and our kicker. Let's talk about the game, though. Impressive performance, though, by Jason Gisser thus far. Oh, yeah. We you know, I, I, we should have put these guys away and broke their will. When he, and Jason, I, he's got to quit blocking and tackling. That's where he's getting in problem. But when he throws and, and hands off, he's doing great. Best luck in the second half. Thanks. I got a hunch there'll be some stern words in the clubhouse. Now let's go to John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Times Square Stadium in New York City. Keith, thanks a lot. And Terry, you heard Mike Price talk about a miscommunication yeah. on that onside kick. That's an understatement. Yeah, I don't know who gets responsibility for that. That's terrible because what that does is change momentum, gives UCLA a chance now to carry momentum, carry that into the halftime locker room, ready to come out. All right, and also knowing they can go after right. Jason Gesser, of course. The Great Hole Arena, the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, where Washington State leads UCLA by 10, 31, 21, as we get ready for the second half of play. It is the kickers who have assumed the title role right now for Washington State. Yeah, Drew Dunning misses a wide open John Tippins, minus seven points for the Cougs. And then kickoff man Adam Holiday whips on the onside kick. Very next play, Drew Olson will hit Junior Taylor for 39 yards out. That made the score 31-21. But Keith, uh, miscommunication is what Mike Price called it, that play. Ooh, could, could very well be 42-14. And uh, we'll see just how UCLA reacts on offense now. They'll get the kickoff, which will go all the way from Adam Holiday from the Cougs. I think the pressure right now shifts over to the Washington State defense, don't you? Well, there's no question. And, and they've been in control. They've done a good job, except for that one play there where the momentum starts to swing. They get the long pass down to Junior Taylor. Well, let's look at the accumulation of numbers out of the first half and see what they look like. Well, it's a typical Pac-10 type of game. It's wide open. You see the 133 yards for the Cougs on the ground. A lot of that, of course, was Jermaine Green's 80-yarder, but you can talk and you can see just how important that uh, defensive line for the Cougars is, allowing just eight, six yards on the ground to Tyler Ebill and the Bruins. The Jason Gesser story remains quite remarkable as he's played the whole first half. Adam Holliday now, they, he's coming back out. I wasn't sure he would after what he did. Well, he might be on the bus. <laughs> he might be on the way home, hitchhiking. <laughs> but he's kicking off. And he drills it. <laughs> you bet he did. You bet he, he better. <laughs> Jason Harrison takes it in the end zone, will bring it out to the 20-yard uh, line, and uh, that's where the Bruins will start. And we begin the half with Todd Harris. 
All right, thank you very much, Keith. Well, I talked to Coach Bob Toledo. He said we are not panicking at all. He says it all comes down to just a few missed tackles here and there. He said we need to calm our young quarterback, and we need to empty the momentum changes. As you know, Coach Toledo has quite a few of those. He says they will not leave a stone unturned as far as those go. I talked to Bill Drake, the trainer for Washington State. He said he did not touch Jason Gesser at halftime. Keith. It's a lucky dude. All right, here come the Bruins. Big moment in this ball game right here for UCLA. They pitch it to Ebel. The Cougar defense stops him after a one-yard pickup. Virgil Williams coming up from his safety spot to make the tackle. UCLA starts with Seidman at tight end. You got Bolander, SF, McCloskey, Vieira, Safer across the front line. Tyler Ebel pretty quiet in that first half. He had uh, four carries for seven yards. But he is ticky. You give him a crack. And you're looking at his hip pocket for a long time. Drew Olson back. Throwing. Pass is thrown to the outside and the pass is incomplete. It was a low pass and the big tight end Mike Seidman couldn't get a handle on it. And the frustration you can see on the face of Mike Seidman, the John Mackey Award finalist, still looking for his first catch of the afternoon. His production, his numbers have dropped way off since the injury to Corey Paws. 10-point lead for Washington State, trying to win this ball game, and if they do win this game, they will go to the Rose Bowl. And then uh, possibly University of Southern California is headed for New Orleans. Olsen goes back the other way, and that is well thrown. Drilled right to the tight end, Mike Seidman, and good for a first down for the Bruins. If UCLA takes this ball and goes down and sticks it in the end zone, we might be in for a whale of a ball game here in the second half. Keith, good job by Seidman working against uh, nickelback Hamza Abdullah. You can see the type of athletic ability this young man has at 6'5", 255. He runs like a wide receiver and provides the quarterback with a big target. Ball is on the 38-yard line for the first down for the Bruins. Olsen back, throwing again. Again has time, goes deep with it. There's nobody home down there. Way down the field and way beyond anybody. It'll be second down and 10. Well, Willie Davis with the uh, blitz from the middle linebacker position. That uh, kind of caused Drew Olsen to just say, hey, I'm getting rid of this ball. Watch number 58 right here. Right up the middle as he does a nice job of getting by the center, Mike McCloskey, and drilling the quarterback. As you can see, this ball 30 yards down the field. Just starting the second half of play. Olsen again. Defensive push was good. They chase him to the sidelines. The intended receiver gets tangled up on the sidelines and falls down, and there's no flag. Marcus Trufant involved over there in the coverage on Junior Taylor. It's kind of interesting that Trufant oftentimes will take the big tight end, but right now he's got his eye on Junior Taylor. Watch uh, Jer Jeremy Williams come in and just push the guard, Yosef Isayev, right into the quarterback. And now, again, two shots in a row. That time, Isaac Brown drills the freshman. Third and ten. Looks like he's checking off. Cougars had eight men in the box. Nine men in the box. Now they drop off. And the ball is thrown over the head and beyond the intended receiver. And suddenly, the Washington State defense rose up and took over. This is Craig Bragg, number 87. Twice today, he has come out of a break and slipped. That time, he just kicks his own feet and goes down. Ball almost intercepted by Eric Coleman. And so Fixie is in to punt again. This will be his fifth punt of the day. His best one was a 57-yarder. Truffaut is waiting for it for Washington State. Oh, they've got some pressure on him, but again, Fixie nails it. 15-yard line, Trufant accepts it, Pendle the flag goes down, and he comes back up to the 25. I think you had a halo violation there, as one of the Bruins was very close to him as the ball was coming down. I think it was Glenn O'Harry, Keith, who uh, violated the two-yard halo and got the flag. Jack Foliard, the referee. Interference with the opportunity 
to catch a kick against the kicking team. The 10 yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. First down. Keith has taken an animated look at the various injuries suffered by Jason Gesser over the last four seasons. How about a broken thumb on his throwing hand? And a broken left leg. Then he broke the thumb again and had a concussion and a serious chest injury that forced him to not eat for a week. Torn rib cartilage earlier this year and of course the well-documented high ankle strain that also moves all the way up to his knee. And Gesser's pass is away down the middle of the field. It is caught by the tight end, Vietnaman. The big freshman takes it all the way down to the UCLA 46-yard line. He is really a good-looking freshman. 6'4", 250 pounds, and he comes out of Mountain View, California. And he likes to work over the middle. Twice now, Gesser has found his tight end going right between the safeties, right down the middle before Emmanuel can get over there with a the big hit. And Jabril Ramo. But uh, Bieneman caught a lot of balls against the Huskies. And talk about another weapon. Two catches, 51 yards. And it's first down. They're on the Bruins side of the field now. Run the ball with John Tippins. And Big John is going to rumble along down to about the 30 before they finally take his wheels away. This offensive line, Derek Roach, number 77. Roach is out right now with a hold in his shoulder, Ben. Yeah, Phil Locker, 69 in there, but uh, you talk about depth. The uh, Kooks got a lot of big, ugly depth, don't they? Yep. My people. More ways than one. <laughs> From the 30. Yes, sir. Blitz is coming. They dump it short. Doesn't work. Tippins is taken down in a hurry by Spencer Havener. And there will be a loss on that play. You know, it's tough to throw a screen pass against man-to-man -man coverage because uh, the guy you're throwing the ball to is going to be locked up with a linebacker. Havener is number 41, looking right at the running back, Tippins. As soon as he clears, he releases and drops him for a loss. Good play by Spencer Havener. Loss is back to the 35-yard line, so it is second down and 15. And you got Mike Bush down on the bottom of the picture there, the big lanky guy. This is Jerome Wiley catching it. Bush was out in front. Wiley was the short man, and Jerome picks up a first down. So they go all the way down to the 15-yard line. And Riley gets a great block from Colin Henderson, who is the slot man who happened to throw a 66-yard touchdown pass on the second play of the game on a similar type of play. There's the block by 83, Henderson. That gave Riley the lane to take it down to the 15. From the 15 out of the shotgun, five wideouts. Gesser gets it away into the end zone, and he tried to force it down the middle, and he threw it right between double coverage, and he's lucky to get it back. Ben Emanuel was the closest man to the ball. Jerome Riley was the fellow underneath, and he was the man he was trying to find. Yes, sir, looking better and better as this game goes along, getting more used to the brace on his right knee and the brace on his right ankle. Doesn't uh, hurt any to have thrown a couple of touchdown passes either. Riley's out of the ball game right now for the Cougars as Gesser goes back under center, changing the play. They'll run it with Jermaine Green, not very far, two yards. And a report now from Todd. Well, Keith, don't be surprised if Washington State starts attacking the UCLA secondary. They're going to be a little thin in the second half. Defensive back Matt Clark will only play if he has to. They're calling it a shoulder sprain. And Jared Page is questionable because he has some serious back spasm. You remember back on that collision he had with DeVar Darling earlier in the first half. Keith. Thank you. Ball is just short of the 13-yard line. Where it is third down and nine now for Washington State. And they go back to the shotgun. Passes away to the end zone. Double coverage again on the intended receiver. He had no chance to catch the ball. It was Bienemann, the tight end. It'll bring up fourth down and brings in Drew Dunning, the place kicker. Dunning's going to have to go out behind the barn and, and throw it at a target here and get a little better rotation on his pass. 
31 yard field goal try now. Henderson will hold it. Snap is high. It's blocked. Snap was high. Ricky Manning came flying in and he blocked it. So the Cougars are flittering away opportunities here and they're going to give UCLA some life before this thing gets too far along and they'll be in trouble because they gave up touchdowns, two touchdowns, and now they give up uh, a short field goal try on a high snap. And the man doing the snapping was the enemy, the tight end. We've got to correct things here and put the heat on Tyler Hunt, the center. It was Tyler who snapped that ball. It was high, and Henderson didn't get it down. And as a result, Manning blocked Dunning's field goal try. And the Bruins will take over the football at the 23-yard line, first down. They're hanging around, trailing by 10 points, 31-21. And Olsen turns and gives it to Ebel, and Ebel's hit behind the line of scrimmage. The man who did the damage was Davis coming up the middle. He slowed him down, and then he got some help. Our aerial coverage today, courtesy of Goodyear and its fleet of airships, reminding you to take all of life's journeys on the wings of Goodyear. This Washington State defense against the run, allowing only 85 yards on the average, only six yards today to the Bruins on the ground. And it's second down and 12. That's Lewis in motion. Olsen back. Getting some heat now as Long breaks through. Here's the penalty flag. That's a holding call coming against UCLA, I think. Ancelano was over there to Ancelano get him down. But it was Ryan Long who fought his way through the traffic and two Bruins trying to block him and uh, I think somebody held him. Yep. Bob Toledo had said that he thought Long was one of the better defensive linemen in the country if not the best and they fully planned to double team him all day. At that time somebody held him. Yeah, he's a defensive tackle who stands six foot six, and it's unusual to find someone his size that can dominate the middle of the line of scrimmage as he does. He's a junior, and he'll be back next year. They average over four sacks a game, but that time a double team wasn't good enough to keep Ryan Long from getting pressure on the quarterback. He's a finalist for the Outland Award and says he's coming back next year because he likes Holy college on football the and likes the, the campus life. Third down. They'll uh, decline the penalty and make it third down and 12. And the Bruins are sitting back on their 20 yard line. There's no question that Ryan Long would be a high draft pick in the NFL this season, but he will be an even higher draft pick after he gets a little bit stronger and a little bit more seasoned, according to Bill Dobin. UCLA comes up double wide to this side of the field. That's Bragg and Taylor. And Olsen goes the other way, throws to the tight end and doesn't get the first down. He's going to be a yard shy as he drilled that ball to Mike Seidman. This is a great throw by Drew Olsen. It's unfortunate that Mike Seidman didn't go a yard farther down the field or he would have picked up the first down easily. It's a curl route by Seidman working on the backside of the formation against Virgil Williams. There's the catch. And the sure tackle by Pat Bennett will keep the Bruins well, maybe short of the first down. They're bringing the chains in because they want to make sure. Obviously, if you're the Bruins, you say, bring those sticks out and let's find out for sure. But it's close. Got a pretty, pretty good spot on it, too. And he is that. Just that. Just that. Do you punt here? Or yeah. do you go ahead and go for it? It appears that Toledo's saying, what the heck? Got nothing... Nothing to lose, perhaps, except my job. Let's go for it on fourth down. The tough thing, though, Keith, is going with a quarterback sneak, which would be the high percentage call here, but you're going right into Ryan Long and Jeremy Williams if you do. Well, he's put J.D. Groves in with manual flight, so it looks to me like you've got the elephant lineup here. You've got the two big guys. Groves is a freshman out of Kaiser, Oregon, and a very good blocker. He played well this year as a freshman. Manny White is that 243-pound tailback and pullback. So they're all jammed in there, and uh, let's see what Olsen does. He goes for it on the sneak. Maybe the second effort, the first brush, wasn't good enough. But I think the second one probably was. Achulanu was right on him. So 
Remove the chains. It's a first down. Pretty good effort by Drew Olson to pick up this first down. As you said, Keith, the first effort doesn't get it, but he stays after it, and so does that offensive line. And I think the block right there by J.D. Groves on Ocelano pushed Olsen forward enough to pick up the first down. It's really close. Man. 33-yard line now for the first down. Fumble. Ball's fumbled, and the Cougars dive for it. Oh, they're going to give it to Olsen. And Olsen came right back for it. Looks like the call says Olsen. That's that old tie base goes to the runner or yep. to the off the offensive player there on dual possession. He out wrestled Mawuli Davis, the middle linebacker. For Watch where this ball goes, though. It goes down the field. Olsen's got to get by his center McCloskey and Ryan Long and then out wrestle a middle linebacker for the ball. Heck of a play by Olsen. Ooh. <laughs> got such narrow things happening here all of a sudden, don't we? It's still second down. They're calling it nine, but it's almost ten. And Olsen's back in the shotgun, trying to get a breath of air. He, he missed the handoff, and suddenly he keeps it, tucks it down, and, and goes off to the right side. And he's going to lose a little bit on it, looks like. Next to Conference Crown and a BCS bid on the line right after this ball game as Oklahoma and Colorado get together in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. That's at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC Sports, the class of college football. Third down and 10. I've been boxing his ears a little bit. But he's a plucky fellow, and his problems are going to be a great one down the road. Here comes the blitz. The pass is away, and it's struck hot to the wide receiver. Isaac Brown was the man tormenting Drew Olson, and that'll bring in the putter. And that's the great thing about this defensive line. They've got speed on the edges with Shavies and Brown, number nine, and power up the middle. Now when you add to the mix the middle linebacker, Davis and Dirting with the blitz, no way for Drew Olson to pick up that third down conversion. Dixie's in to punt. It's number six on the day. Trufant waiting. Marcus from Tacoma, Washington. Pressure! They block it. It's rolling around on the ground, and they fight for it down at the 15 yard line. Adam Bradeswood uh, turns one for the Cougars on their special teams. They've had nothing but bad stuff from them, and now all of a sudden they get a good one. Took Fixie a long time to get this one off. And Bradewood, number 96, will come right up the middle. As he fights off the block and then takes the ball right off the foot of Fixie. That's a heck of a job by Bradewood as Seidman went to the inside and left Braidwood wide open. And Braidwood is from Delta, British Columbia. So a bc -er gets a big play for the Cougars. And Jonathan Smith is your single back. Fresh legs. Down to the one. Just short of the goal line. So Jonathan Smith with his first carry of the day. A junior from Pasadena. Right here where we are. So he almost popped that thing for the touchdown. Now the big guy comes back in, Tippins. What a uh, trio of running backs with Jermaine Green and Tippins. Now we're seeing Jonathan Smith, who Mike Levenseller, offensive coordinator, told me had a great week of practice filling in for Jermaine Green. Tippins, touchdown. So they block the kick and cash it in. At 7.27 to go in the third quarter. But of all the teams in the Pac-10 conference looking down the road, I think the UCLA Bruins have more young players of quality than almost anybody else. They have got a bunch coming back. Those two freshman quarterbacks have a huge meaning down the road for them. Well, here's a kick that works. And it's a 38-21 ball game now. Washington State to the lead, and this time Tyler Hunt right on target with his snap.
727 to go in the third quarter Washington State rebuilds its lead to 17 points Jason Harrison and Wendell Mathis will be waiting for the kickoff that was John Kippins there getting a pat on the head and getting a talking to now from Mike Levenseller the offensive coordinator for the Cougars here's the kickoff from Holiday it's a high kick taken at the six yard line and a wide open crease for Jason Harrison he almost got out of there very good return come good block my goodness he had a hold Don Jackson finally brought him down and a heck of a tackle by Donnie Jackson junior middle linebacker playing on special teams this was a huge hole and from the left side of the screen you'll see 52 flash in here and just drill Harrison and that he's the one that's hurt because of that slashing tackle Looks like he got hit with a helmet right on the hip right leg oh man oh, hyper extension mm. so we've got a timeout for Harrison he just came off a concussion too he's had a hard month and that stops your clock for the moment a 38 to 21 ball game and important for UCLA to just get back to their original game plan of where they thought that they could get Craig Bragg more involved in the game and that's what they're going to have to do coming up We'll be right back. Jason Harrison obviously had to leave the ball game, and uh, we we hope it's not too bad. He was just a breath away from a big play, and then boom! But here come the Bruins now with the first down at the 30-yard line. Drew Olson, the quarterback. Ebell the tailback. Ebell has the ball, getting some blocking help. Turns back into traffic, and when he goes back into track, he runs into Eric Coleman. You know what? We're going to finally get this thing on the air. December 14 at 9 Eastern uh, and 6 Pacific on ESPN, The Junction Boys. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything else about what Paul Bryant did when he went out there to Texas A&M, except he got a new cigarette lighter at Kentucky, and that spurred him on to go <laughs> to Texas A&M. He'll enjoy it. It's fun. Second down and seven. Olsen sets, has time, good protection. Ball comes out of the hands of Manuel White. Poorly thrown pass by Drew Olsen. Hurried the throw. Again, not uh, looking for Craig Bragg, who has no catches this afternoon. His big tight end, Mike Seidman, just two catches. And they are the two main weapons, especially when you think about Tab Perry not being able to play at wide receiver for the Bruins today. Vision is so important. Decision making and vision. I don't know which one comes first. I suppose vision, really. See the field and then make your decision. Third down and seven. Deep drop again. Good protection. He throws and that's incomplete. I think. No, he caught it. Thought I saw it come out for Craig Bragg going right down to the grass to get it. And they give him the catch. And I think they may give him a first down too, Keith. Yeah, it's beyond the marker. Going down and digging it out. Fine Ooh. catch. Both arms underneath it. It's hard on your elbows. Ball's on the 40-yard line. And it's a first down for the Bruins at 6-10 to go in the third quarter. Just kind of dinking and dunking right now. And the Cougars take off, so that must mean somebody moved along the front. One of the defenders stepped in and then came back. And then all of a sudden, uh, three of them went across, so that usually means somebody has moved. Well, originally it was Fred Shavies. Offside. And they call on the, the offside. Defense. Finley is five yards. All right, here's Todd. Spot. All right, Keith, as you pointed out, it's 17 bowls are still up in the air, so it takes a BYU Cougar to sort this whole thing out. Here's how it works. If Washington State wins, Washington State goes to the Rose Bowl. As simple as that. USC goes to BCS at large bid. UCLA, ASU, Oregon, Washington, Oregon State will fight over the Holiday Sun, the Insight, Las Vegas, and the Seattle. Pac-10 bowl purse, $21.69 million. Now, if UCLA wins, 
to see all these USC fans behind me getting into this. USC will go to the Rose Bowl, and that's why they're cheering on their beloved Bruins. Washington State would go to the Holiday Bowl, and all of LA would be happy. But the Pac-10 Bowl purse drops down to $17.197 million. So it's a difference of $4.498 million. That's how it is. My thanks to Kendall, my assistant. Keith? Narrow, narrow, narrow <laughs> thinking there when you say, you know, well, there's so many possibilities. Here's a good solid effort by the right side of that line again. They lead Manny White down to the 45-yard line on the Washington State side of the field and another Bruin first down. The L.A. Times this morning had the story that, uh, you know, all USC to come, it'll cost Pasadena money. If you bring Iowa here, they bring thousands of people with them. You have Washington State here in the Rose Bowl, you have thousands of people. If you're looking for out-of-town money, that's the matchup you want. I know the Trojans want to come, but if I'm in Pasadena, I'm thinking about that old bottom line thing. Turn that rock over one more time and let's see how many dollar bills are on Back goes Olsen. He's got time again. He's got a man wide open at the 30-yard line. It's Craig Bragg. Bragg brought down by Jason David, and that was a very good pass. He's been going right, right, right. Now he comes back to the left and gets a big play. Uh, Olsen's been beat up pretty good this afternoon. He's been sacked four times. A little trouble with the snap on that one, but look at the time to throw and the room to throw. Stepping forward, and then it's a zone coverage by Jason David on the outside here against Craig Bragg, and a sharp route by Bragg and hanging on as David delivers the helmet to the ball. It's on the 31 yard line through the side of the field as the Bruins again are mounting a threat now. And the ball off inside it goes to Tyler Ebell. Ebell is 5'9", 170 pounds but he plays a lot bigger than that. Tomorrow John Saunders and Terry Bowden Times Square Stadium. Oh, guess what the subject is. Oh yeah. Who's in? Who's out? Who's got the money? Hmm. Don't miss the Tostitos BCS election show tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on yeah. ABC. Well, I know one thing. January 3rd will be at the Fiesta Bowl with Ohio State and Miami. Miami, that has been resolved. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl got a matchup between the Big Ten and the Miami Hurricanes defending their national championship. Pressure coming, got his screen set up. There's a convoy for Mike Seidman, touchdown. A tight end screen. Perfectly executed screen pass by the Bruins to Mike Seidman, the big tight end. They scored on this earlier this year against Oregon State. Seidman with his speed. Here he is on this side of the screen. Watch the block downfield by his linemate, Bryce Bolander, 78, getting out in front and just getting enough of the defensive back to get Simon in the end zone. Bixie for the point. It's no good. No good. We watched UCLA lose a ball game right here in on this field in this stadium when Oregon blocked a kick. This time they just missed it. You know, we never pay as much attention, I guess, to the extra point as we should, but how many times have we seen ball games swing on it? Ethan, it's, it's been almost automatic for Fixie this year. He's been 12 out of 12 with PATs. He's only missed one field goal, but that makes a 10-point game an 11-point game. He will kick off now. Drifting toward the corner where it's fielded by Jonathan Smith coming up the middle. Penalty flag goes down. Look out for that one. It might come back. ABC Sports presentation of college football. Nope. Let's see about that flag. Now the uh, field judge talking. And it's against the Cougars on the run back. Push in the back. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Pontiac. Fuel for the soul. The people of Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate. Nibia for Men After Shave Balm, More Evolved Skin Care. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. So that penalty is very costly. From where it occurred, it's going to put them back inside the 10-yard line. And the thing the Bruins have to do on...
this possession is win the battle on first down, especially with the Cougars backed up here. This is a huge play for UCLA. Gesser hands it off. It goes to Jonathan Smith. Smith gets it to the 10 yard line for a two yard gain and let's check in again with John Saunders. Well, the dogs win big. Who knows? Miami, however, has won and Ohio State has won and they're headed for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. But the Georgia Bulldogs looking for a piece of the big action too. Gesser's pass is thrown underneath and wow. Woo. Jonathan Smith out of the backfield ran into Matt Blair and it's just like he ran into Grandpa's favorite hickory tree. I mean, he stopped. <laughs> and the hickory tree's still standing. <laughs> yes. And amazingly, so is Jonathan Smith. Wow. Here he comes out of the backfield. Good job by Gesser stepping up and finding his outlet. Now watch 17. Boom. Whoa. Big hit by Matt Ware, 200-pound cornerback. Now you could feel that one in Arcadia at least. It's first down, however, so the Cougars got a little daylight behind them, and here's a big old pulling guard leading the running back Smith around the corner, and it's a first down, Washington State. They got a bunch of big people in front of Smith that time and just buried the defense. And Brandon Chiller is slow to get up. In fact, he's not getting up at all. Number 11, linebacker for the Bruins, out in front. Calvin Armstrong. You got Armstrong at 315, Roach 296, and Tyler Hunt 290. That's a wagon load. And getting caught underneath it was Brandon Tiller. Well, they provide such a great screen and such a shield for these running backs. They're all about 6'6 or taller. And uh, Smith goes at 5'10", Green 5'11". We'll get in behind him. It's tough to find them. Cougars have passed 400 yards now in their uh, total offense for the day. Two minutes and seven seconds remaining to play in the third quarter. 38-27 lead, Washington State by 11. And it's first down out on the 34-yard line. Gesser. Takes the handoff, keeps it. Look at him moving around on a broken leg and throws the ball right on the money to Sammy Moore for a first down at the UCLA 23-yard line. Remarkable is about all you can say about Jason Gesser. The respect that his teammates have for him has just grown by leaps and bounds. Watch this move. He's got a brace on his right ankle, one on his right knee. He fakes out Rusty Williams. And then the throw is absolutely perfect. In stride to his running back, or rather his slot back, Sammy Moore. What a play by Gesser. 23-yard line, first down. Minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Ball handed to Smith. Taken down with authority after he picks up about a yard. Keith, I know you broadcast the game where Willis Reed Made such a uh, great contribution to the Knicks championship run. But this performance by this young man's got a rate right up there with that. Yep. You've seen them both. Yep. Well, last year in the Sun Bowl, uh, he, he had a broken right thumb on his passing hand. And uh, they won that ball game. He played the whole game. Out of the shotgun now. Steps up, dumps it off, didn't get it away. And he's rolled around on the ground some, but uh, gets up again. Well, as we take a look at the career numbers of Jason Gesser, three things become clear. His obvious talent as an athlete, but his durability despite injuries over the years and his leadership qualities, a lot of wins for the only three-time captain in Wazoo Cougar history. It is third down and 10 now. So they got the fiddling around down here. And they got third and long. He's changed his play twice. <laughs> Better hurry up. Goes back to the running back, Smith. And Smith pops through there over the left side. But he's still well short by a couple of yards of the first down. And Ben Emanuel makes the tackle on the running back. And now what do you do? Do you go ahead and send Dunning in? 
What do you go for? Now I think you send Dunning in. He kicked the field goal. Get up by 14 points here. Never give up a chance to get a point. 20 seconds, 19 ticking along here. This could be the last play of the third quarter. We've seen Gesser change plays on the pass play. That time he read the defense and got the right run call. Better hurry up. They don't get it off. They don't get it off. Burn the clock. Now, that's not that bad a deal. Better to burn the clock and get your team set up from five Offense, yards back five than yards, to hurry. Spot, Remember, Tyler down. Hunt has snapped the ball back a couple of times too high. It's better for the kicker to be relaxed and ready to go. <laughs> Not sure Mike Price agrees with me, though. <laughs> well... They have burned uh, not only burned the clock they ran through the end of the third quarter. So after three it is a 38 27 ball game with Washington State leading UCLA and ABC Sports presentation to college football returns after this message and the word from our ABC station. Drew Dunning is on the field for a 37-yard field goal try for Washington State. Tyler Hunt snaps. Colin Henderson holds. That's good. Hold is good. Kicks up. Kicks good. Funny how that works. 41-27 now. Washington State back to a 14-point lead. So he is good from uh, 30 and 37. He had one block from 31 yards. Let's take a look at the first team all Pac-10 selections. Washington State has three first team all Pac-10 players on offense, including two on the offensive line, Calvin Armstrong and Derek Roche. UCLA has two players, seniors Mike Seidman and Mike Safer. Co-offensive players of the year in the Pac-10, Jason Gesser and Carson Palmer. couple of pretty good ones there. Gesser in a remarkable performance today with that leg injury, ankle injury, uh, high ankle sprain, knee, all everything going on. And joshing away there with his coach. Mike Price has a remarkable relationship with his football team. Ricky Manning and Wendell Mathis now will be the deep people for UCLA as Washington State kicks off from the 35 yard line. Adam Holliday who whipped one, gave UCLA a position for a touchdown at the end of the first half. Do it again. Now he's going to kick it. I don't think he'll be messing with it this time. And it's, it's a good kick. Going well back into the end zone, and there'll be no return. Out to the 20 come the Bruins. Keith, let's uh, check out the defensive players of the year in the Pac-10. Washington State has two defensive linemen, Ryan Long, or two defensive selections, Ryan Long and Marcus Trufant, cornerback. UCLA's Ricky Manning was named to the first team for his third consecutive year. Oregon State led the conference with four defensive players selected. The defensive player of the year was this man, Terrell Suggs. Including special teams, Washington State and Oregon State led the Pac-10 with five first team selections. UCLA had four. Here come the Bruins now, trailing by 14 points as we start the fourth quarter of play. Drew also not throwing, and it is no good. Almost for Craig Bragg, but the ball was very low, and Craig could not reel it in. There's a heck of an effort by Craig Bragg as he comes in short motion to get Trufant off the bump and, bu bump and run. Watch the effort there. As he had it there for a second, and then the ball came loose as he rolls over. Great job with the hands, and then when he hits the ground, the ground can cause an incomplete pass. Second and ten. Pitch it outside. Little lost of his footing there. Uh, Elip Ebel uh, starting to make his cut. Lost the grip and didn't have the inertia to get it going again. So they get him uh, short of the line of scrimmage. Now he's got to be terribly frustrated. Nine carries 10 yards for Tyler Ebell. Every time he tries to go to the outside, those defensive ends Shavies and Brown and Ocelanu are getting up the field forcing them back inside. 
Third and ten. Olsen has a lot of time to throw, and the ball comes out again. The pass was again low, and you're going down to the ground. Mike Seidman was the man trying to make that catch. It, it's hard, especially for a big man, to go down that low and, and make a catch. Yeah, especially with a linebacker like Pat Bennett all over your back. 46 is Bennett, but the ball is thrown late and low. Late and low means incomplete. <laughs> Sounds like a soft drink. Fourth down. Dietary softer. The last punt was blocked by Fixie, so he's given him a little more room, which means the center's got to snap that ball a little bit farther. At least it looks like he's a little farther. Oh, he bounced it back and Fixie handled it. Short hopped it and got it out, and that's a really good kick. Trufant, a little help, get started, and then they drag him down at the 39 yard line. So that's pretty good stuff by Fixie. 45 yard punt after short hopping the snap. Washington State to the ball. First down. They're on 39-yard line. DeVard Darling has not seen the ball here in the second half. They run it inside. Ball goes to Jonathan Smith. A couple of yards on the play, maybe. And here's Todd Harris. Well, Keith, a little bit of uh, running back news. Jason Harris of UCLA is done for the day. They took him in the locker room, x-raying his leg. Jermaine Green, though, they say he's doubtful to return because he's been dehydrated all game. Apparently, he has been suffering from the flu all week in Pullman. They don't want to bring him back if they don't have to. And that's the word from Bill Drake. All right. Uh, he made the Bruins sick with that 80-yarder. He gave them stomach kick. <laughs> Second down and eight. Nestor hands it off again, and the running back, Smith, doesn't have a good grip himself as he cuts back into the middle and picks up another three yards. Right after our game, we've got a conference championship and a BCS trip on the line as the Oklahoma Sooners and the Colorado Buffalo block horns in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific here on ABC Sports, the classic knowledge football. And I guess Chris Brown's out of the ball game, Purified's out of the ball game, and they'll be going with Calhoun, the freshman tailback. He talked about how they turned Colorado. their season around. They turned it around right here against these Bruins. Third down, Gesser. Let's it go, he's got a man wide open. The ball is caught by Darling, and Darling going back into the middle of the field, looking for some help. Couldn't get any, and takes it down to about the 13-yard line for a first down. So we said Darling had not seen the ball, and all of a sudden he was wide open, and Gesser saw it. Well, he's wide open because he keeps his eyes on his quarterback. Gesser is so good at making the adjustment even on one leg, watch the mobility as he steps up and then steps out of the pocket, head is downfield, his receiver, Darling, just gets right by Ricky Manning, and it's a blown coverage by the Bruins. Manning either had to stay with Darling or he needed safety help, but Darling knew where his quarterback was in trouble and bailed him out. And it's first down at the Bruin 13-yard line. Smith is the deep back. He's got the ball. Sweep right, take them down in a hurry. He's going to lose two yards on that play as the Bruins just came in and ate him up. The man that got there first was Marcus Reese with some help from Matt Ball. Cougars now have gone over 500 yards in the ball game, but it ain't over. Like Yogi said, till it's over, it's only a 41-27 ball game and a lot of time. 11 and a half minutes. This is Riley. And the Bruins are having none of this uh, reverse business, and they turn him back inside and take him down at the 17 yard line. Rusty Williams and Spencer Havener played it well. I'm not so sure the uh, Cougars need to run trick plays anymore. They're, they're having pretty good success. They're over 500 yards in total offense. Deep in the red zone here on a second down and long. They try to fool the uh, Bruins with the reverse to Riley. No, nope, nothing doing there. Well, with Pippins, uh, I think we haven't seen him. They got Smith in there now, but Smith is not particularly a north-south runner. And uh, Jermaine Green, they don't want to use him. Here's Gesser. Pressure's coming, but a hurry. Steps away from it, steps away. Now gets rid of it, and he's got a man in the end zone, and the fight for it, the Bruins intercept it. 
It's picked off by Ben Emanuel. It was intended for Jerome Riley. Riley was looked like he might have a chance, but the ball was a little short. And Emanuel stole it. Well, Gesser got hit just as he let it go, and it caused the ball to lose its spiral, hang up in the air, and that allowed Ben Emanuel to get his second pick of the day. How about this mobility? Moving around in the pocket on one leg. Now he's got somebody there and he gets hit from behind by Brandon Schiller. That caused the ball to get out of spiral, as you can see. Easy pickoff by Ben Emanuel. And what a huge play for UCLA. Again, the Cougars miss an opportunity to put points on the board. Set down to figure it up. It's probably it will come up to around 27 points if they've put it away. Here's Olsen throwing. It is intercepted. It's going the other way. Eric Coleman touchdown. Oh. There ain't no thunderstorms around, but likely to be <laughs> sure striking. Fifth career interception for Eric Coleman, and that will guarantee that the Cougs will be back here on January 1, I think. You talked about decision-making and vision. Toughest thing for a young quarterback is seeing the field and knowing when to throw the ball. We've seen Olsen's last couple of passes be late and be low. That one was just late. Dunning's point, good. So at 10 minutes and 20 seconds to play in the ball game, it's Washington State 48 and UCLA 27. And all over the country today, people have been scoring points. Well, Butch the Cougar used to live in a cage and used to howl, but Butch the Cougar, the real Cougar's been long gone, so now we have a cheerleader or some very active person performing the butch role. Tyler Ebell now and Wendell Mathis will go back to accept this kickoff from Holiday, and it's not too deep. It's taken all the way out on the 12 yard line by Mathis. Here's a penalty flag as we've got a pretty good run back here out to about the 33 yard line. Washington State six touchdowns today have been scored by six different players. Bush, Darling, Riley, Green, Tippins, and now Coleman. And Eric Coleman, incidentally, is, uh, is also the leading tackler on the ball club. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. The Office of National Drug Control Policy, Parents, the Anti-Drug, and Bowflex for real fitness results. The football is at the 19-yard line for UCLA. You've got 10 minutes and 10 seconds to play in a ball game. They're trailing by 21 points. And Matt Moore has come into the ball game at quarterback for UCLA. His first appearance of the day, he's a freshman too. A rangy fellow, and uh, they very, think very highly of him. And here's a, uh, an exceptional run by Manny White over the left side. It looked like for a moment he was going down short of the line of scrimmage, and then he just started rumbling, and now there's a flag thrown across the field. Something involving uh, cornerback Jason David. He had to be restrained by his teammates. Personal foul against the Bruins. There you have it. Wide receiver blocking against the cornerback. That wipes out a very good run by Emmanuel White. Matt Moore is a 6'4", 180-pound freshman out of Valencia. He's another one of those Hart High School quarterbacks. Seems every year there's a quarterback on a Division I football team from Hart High School. Kyle Bowler at California. And there was there was one weekend here where we had, uh, what was it, three of them? Yeah, Kyle Matter. Yeah. Kyle Matter at Stanford. Yeah. And Hart's right in the high school hunt for the championship again this year. Pitch it outside. Trying to get some daylight, and they get some daylight on it. But after the personal foul, Call, uh, Craig Bragg is not able to get it all the way up for the first down, but he does get to the 25. Take a look at our Nissan Drive Summer. You can see for the Bruins in the second half, a lot of long field to go. Only one touchdown out of their five drives. That was the 
tight end throwback screen to Mike Seidman. But they've, uh, the defense of the Cougs has contained this high powered UCLA offense. Second down and two. Lights are on here at the Rose Bowl as Gus settles in. And that's close to a first down on that carry by Manny White. Drew Olson played into the fourth quarter at quarterback. He took a pretty good pummeling, but he looks unscarred. Young man knew it was going to come down to him today. Told me yesterday that uh, this game would swing on how well the Bruins played defense and how well he protected the ball. So the Bruins do have the first down. Chain gang marches along. The ball is placed down at the 28-yard line. And time remaining, 9-12. More throwing. Good zip on it. Pass completed to Junior Taylor. Taylor, 6'2", 197. Freshman. Craig Bragg's only a sophomore. Keith Carter's a freshman. Mercedes Lewis is a freshman. Josh Renicky is a freshman. A lot of young talent. Drew Olson, of course, and Matt Moore are both freshmen. He's working with White's a sophomore. Taylor's going against Marcus Trufant. This ball was zipped, as you said, Keith. High hard one and uh, the good hands of Junior Taylor only had six catches coming into today's game. He's got three, four now. And a first down just short of the 40 yard line for him. Force pass down the middle. That's good. Bought by Mike Seidman. Had some pop on it, put it right on his numbers. And that's another first down. And you're not seeing any hesitation from Matt Moore. He's getting back, planting the back foot, then coming forward with the ball. The hesitation is what cost Drew Olson, especially on the interception to Eric Coleman. Eight and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Ball is on the Washington State 49-yard line now in possession of the Bruins for the first down. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Moore's pass is away, and it is... Way down there, and there's a penalty flag thrown by the side judge. Junior Taylor was down there dueling with Jason David, and there's a penalty in that territory. Yeah, Jason David's had an interesting uh, return to the lineup, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he has. He just got dinged with a, a, per, a, a penalty there. Yeah, he had an interception earlier, then he got beat for the touchdown by Junior Taylor. Now, the obvious pass interference. Whenever a defensive back puts both hands up there, I say, I didn't even touch him. You know that flag's coming. Guilty as sin. Matt Kegel now cranking up on the sidelines for Washington State. With 48 points, one would think that would be enough. But UCLA's already they've got 27, and they may be about to put some more on the board. First, first down. Uh, at the 34. Four turns and hands it inside. It goes to the big guy, Manuel White. And a uh, penalty flag goes down. Penalty flags all over the field now as we get some extracurricular stuff. Looked like confetti there. Well, uh, they're indicating. Uh, penalties against UCLA and the Bruins are walking back up the field so I would say that's a pretty good indication. We had an ejection? Not yet. I thought for a moment I saw somebody running off. It might have been an ejection but not so. Let's find out about the penalty. Dead ball, personal foul against the offense. 15 yards, end of the run. Second down. Hi, Bubba's the Goodyear Blimp Spirit of America has been providing these aerial pictures. 2002, the 104th anniversary of Goodyear and 77th for their Blimp fleet. The cameraman, Fabian Ochoa, and the pilot, Charles Russell. Thank you, gentlemen. Mike Safer with the late hit at the end of that run. I think if uh, four flags are thrown on you, you should be ejected. <laughs> That's why I thought there was going to be an ejection. You don't normally see that much. Ed Blanton has come in at the moment. Get Mike on the sideline and cool him down a little, I guess. 
Frustration probably setting in too. Eight minutes to play in the ball game, and they're down by 21. Hasn't been the kind of season they had in mind in last year nor this year. Second down and 17 now. And Matt Moore gets his pass away, and it is caught, but not a big game on it. It goes down to about the 39-yard uh, line with uh, Will Dirting decking uh, Manny White. That's a pretty good matchup, running back White against Dirting uh, linebacker, both young'uns and both big and strong. Third down. Ball is inside the 39. Call it the 38 if you want to be absolutely officially correct. And it's third and 14. White swings it out, gets it into the hands of the ball carrier, and uh, they'll stop him short of the first down. As the play goes to the 29, Tyler Ebel carrying. They had to go down inside the 24 to pick up their first down. A little play action screen to the man you're faking the ball to. Watch Ebel after the fake come out here and this uh, will bring up a fourth down and six Bruins will go for it they're forced to this was a smart play call now we'll see if they've got two smart play calls in a row that's Craig Bragg in motion blitz coming they hit him as he throws it's incomplete oh that was close the blitzer was almost across the line of scrimmage. Will Dirty. Dirty showing off his entire repertoire, staying with the big running back, bringing him down, and then the speed to put the pressure on the quarterback right up the middle. Washington State 48, UCLA 27. Now you think at this point that Jason Gesser would be done for the day. Looks like Coach Price is going to send him in for one more play and then let Jason Gesser get his due rewards. Matt Cagle already to warm up, came out to the huddle expecting to play, and they sent him back to the sideline, but it shouldn't be for too much longer, Keith. Well, Matt's going to get confused and, uh, and irritated. Uh, I mean, he's, he's ready to play, and uh, he needs to play some because he's the man, looks like it's the next year. The crowd today was 56,355. I'm not Gesser hands the ball away, and look at this. On daylight over the left side, John Tippins finally showing up, and John takes it on out to the 40 and picks up a first down for Washington State. And now here comes Gesser off the field. He's probably done for the day. And his teammates come over and say thanks. Mike Bush hugs him as he comes off the field. This is quite a kid, folks. I mean, he, he's got some special stuff in him. Keith, to be able to perform at such a high level with such pain in his right leg, I've never seen anything like it. So here's Matt Kegel in the lineup now. He turns and hands it away, and he gives it to Tippins again, and Tippins is chunking and churning for about four yards. And guess what he's studying? Guess what he's studying? <laughs> Not broadcasting, is he? Yes. Well, then he could do this specific live game summary because <laughs> it's all about him offensively over 500 yards for the Cougs and then defensively holding the Bruins and Tyler Ebel. Miserable afternoon, just 10 yards on the ground. The Bruins, three turnovers turning into 10 Wazoo points. I told him last night, he is looking for my job. Now. Don't be too quick. Second down and seven, they call it. That's a couple of yards there at the most. They just keep that clock rolling. It's now just coming up on five minutes. They've got 21 point lead. And one would surmise that's enough. But I'll tell you what, a Bob Toledo football team can ring up some points on before you can take a breath. I don't know how in the world he's walking around. I, 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 it's, just, it's just amazing to me what he's done today. Yeah, we saw him last night trying to uh, get loose with a very obvious limp and then today just getting used to the brace on his ankle then the brace on his knee and all the tape and gauze wrapped around both remarkable and this whole thing has been an almost magic experience even though they lost in the ball game it literally gave it away at the end of that and losing to the Huskies in the Apple Cup and, and triple overtime the enthusiasm of that man right there the coach Mike Price last night 
Last night, we sat him down and, and he talked about coming into Pasadena and coming here. And this is the way he expressed it. It doesn't get any better than this. Driving down that road at dusk with the Rose Bowl lights on, just, I uh, get, get goosebumps. Look at that. <laughs> I'm doing it again. Just uh, thinking about it. That's what it's all about. Doesn't mean better than this. Snap back for the punt. High hanger. Pretty good kick. Fair catch call inside the 10 yard line at the nine by Craig Bragg. So that's a very good punt by Kyle Buster. And with uh, three minutes and 41 seconds to play in a ball game, it's 48 27, Washington State. Well, he's still walking around. Everybody's hugging him. Time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Well, when you're that age, you're made out of rubber anyway. Bruins possess the ball, first down at the nine yard line. And 341 left to play in the ball game. Matt Moore's pass, thrown well, passes over the head, and here's your penalty flag. They're going to call interference on that one. It was intended for Bragg, defended by Carl Pima. While they're marking it off, our executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz, our senior producer of ABC Sports, Bob Toms, coordinating producer of ABC's college football, Bob Goodrich. And here are the guys that we've been working with all season. Today's game produced by Mark Loomis, directed by Patty Mack, Patrick McManus, associate producer Derek Mobley, associate director Jeff Kibler, John Zippe, our technical director, our production assistants Tom Wicks, Juliana Barbieri, Matt Jenkins, computer graphics, and Fred Amos. And uh, our spotter is always Kelly Hayes and Mark Meadow handling our statistics. And they're off to Miami for that big thing with the Dolphins. Monday night, 20th, what is it, 30th anniversary of the uh, undefeated season. Deflected at the line of scrimmage, the pass is incomplete. Our studio show was produced by Tim Weinkoff, directed by Calvin Haywood, and our technical director is Kevin Berman. And you've got the uh, BCS uh, show tomorrow with uh, John and Terry and uh, all those folks we just named you in the Times Square Stadium to figure out uh, who it is and where they're going and what have you. We know that Miami and Ohio State are going to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl for the national championship game, so we invite you to join us tomorrow for the BCS Selection Show at 3.30 Eastern and 12.30 Pacific. See. We're running out the clock. Matt Moore puts it in the air. He's got a man. Oh, my goodness. And it is incomplete. Marcus Trufant made that defensive play. Number 45, Craig Bragg, the intended receiver. Now, the one thing we know when we look at the BCS standings, one and two are set for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And Keith, we can't wait to get there January 3rd for the national championship game between those two great teams. Be fun. And it's great that they're undefeated, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Clean as a whistle. Jim Trussell, Larry Coker, two guys who waited a good long time to get their opportunity as a head coach of a Division 1A school, and Larry's won for his second successive national championship. And Jim Trussell has stepped into the breach at Ohio's at the Ohio State University, and the Buckeyes play some pretty good defense. We've got a timeout, 326 to play. Yeah. Yeah. UCLA's Matt Moore in throwing for Junior Taylor as we run through the final minutes or so of this ball game. 321 left. Washington State 48 and UCLA 7. This will be the fourth Rose Bowl appearance for Washington State. And uh, every indication is that their opponent will be Iowa. And the Hawkeyes had a wonderful year. I mean, they're just a really great story. And the echoes of it will uh, begin to get out on this side of the mountain pretty soon. Kirk Ferentz and his people have really done a job in Iowa City. And the guy that's jumping up and down the highest is Hayden Frank. The punt, low liner, and Trufant comes over, calls fair catch at the 46-yard line. And here's the uh, 
Cougar history in their appearances in the Rose Bowl goes back to 1906 when Lone Star Deets brought them down here. They played Brown out of the Ivy League and won the ball game with a shutout. Then in 1931, Wallace Wade started his second team against Washington State, then put the first team in at the second half and drummed them pretty good. And then 1997, they came in and played at the 98 Rose Bowl game and lost to the Michigan Wolverines. And that was the game involving Bob Greasy and his son, Brian Greasy. Brian, of course, the quarterback for the Michigan Wolverines and threw the ball that won the game for them. And I've always said, if we hadn't lost Michael Black at the close of the first half, we'd won. <laughs> yeah, that old we thing. I, you did a good job today controlling your your crimson and gray spirit. Well, it's fun to see the folks in the Northwest have some success. And uh, I'm not telling, I'm saying anything to you, but if you're thinking about next year, you better think about the guys wearing blue because there's some great talent in those uniforms, and they're going to be back, most of them, next year. And when you look around and see all these skilled position people who are freshmen, sophomores, oh, boy. Tyler Ebel's only a freshman. On and on it goes. Manuel White's a sophomore. Kruger's just running the clock now as we're inside uh, two and a half minutes. Tony Ryan carrying the ball there, so everybody's trying to get a piece of it. The Miami Hurricanes being led by Larry Cooker, who worked for so long in the shadows of other coaches and now is sitting in the catbird seat going for a second successive national championship as he sends a team in led by a California quarterback, as a matter of fact, in Dorsey. Dorsey had a good day today. The Hurricanes uh, had a big offensive day today and uh, it was here against the Nebraska Cornhuskers that they embraced that piece of crystal just a year ago. How about Larry Coker? Never Great tasted story. defeat. <laughs> ah, well everything in life is cyclical and he knows it. Ball is handed away again. Keep the ball on the ground. Run your clock. He almost fumbled that thing and he got away from him, but Ryan hangs on. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Jason Gesser of Washington State and Ben Emanuel of UCLA. Gesser, the story well documented now. 15 out of 24, 247 yards with two picks and two touchdowns. And UCLA's Ben Emanuel had two interceptions, one for a touchdown, and he's had a total of 10 tackles in the ball game today. So a, a good game for Ben. 105 coming up on a minute to go in the ball game. And I guess uh, it's become pretty obvious, especially after what happened last weekend, that the old pitch and catch conference out here on the sunset side of the mountain can play pretty good defensive football. Yeah, the uh, USC Trojans and the Washington State Cougars two of the best defenses in the country. Particularly, I think, the defensive fronts. I mean, they are really in. Uh, that's Bill Doba, the defensive coordinator, who just got the dose from the Gatorade bucket. And Bill is uh, the, the defensive coordinator, as I said, but he's, he's loved by those kids. He's a great fellow, and he is a pretty damn good defensive football coach. That defense only gave up 300 yards to the Bruins today, kept them with only 52 yards on the ground. Well, that'll do it. That'll run out your clock. The Washington State Cougars are going back to the Rose Bowl. Mike Price, Bob Toledo coming out. Mike Price and Bob Toledo have known each other a long time. They're good friends. A lot of noise about whether or not Bob will retain his job at UCLA. But his head's up, and he'll do well. But the biggest story of the day, I guess, other than the fact that the Cougars are going to the Rose Bowl, Jason Gesser, the game he had. Keith, he knew he had to play well for the Cougars to win this game and get to the Rose Bowl. He knew he'd have tremendous pressure from the Bruins. He didn't realize he'd have to be a blocker, but he knew he'd get great support from his teammates, that offensive line and his receivers, and the leadership that he has shown today is legendary. So they gather in the center of the field as the crowd thins out, and here's Todd Harris on the field. 
All right, thank you, Keith. Coach, do you mind coming back in two weeks? Oh, oh, oh we love it. That's what we came down here. Just an honor to come back. So much of this performance hinged on this young man's right leg. What can you say about him? I, I just think he's the greatest. He's, a, he's the MVP of the whole history of our school, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what, Keith, Mike Price's speech was pretty rare. Jason, you're a warrior. No, you knew they were going to count on you. First of all, how's the leg? <laughs> it's holding up right now, you know. It's, it's a lot better that we won right now, you know. But, uh, hey, we're coming back. And that, that was the main reason why I came out here. Team played well. It's one of the best uh, team performances we had all year. You know, special teams, defense, offensive line receivers, you know. And uh, came together at the right time. And, and uh, that's all we got to say. Can you get up for one more and do you care who you play? Oh, I can get up for at least one more. We got one more. You know, we want we want one more. You know, it's, it's fine, Danny, right now, but we got we got to win that one. You know, and, and uh, we want to win that one. Um, doesn't matter who we play. It matters we're there. That's right. it. Keith, you'll like this. The Washington State Cougars to the Rose Bowl. Back to you. All right, Todd. Again, your final score: Washington State 48 and UCLA 27. ABC Sports Online, ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Now let us join John Saunders and Terry Bowden at Times Square Stadium in New York. All right, guys, thanks a lot. When you look at Washington State, most of the talk was about Jason Gesser and the offense, how well they played. But the other side of the ball was key as well. That's right, Washington State's defense. They totally shut down the running game of, of UCLA. Tyler Ever had no yardage, had no yards. It forced those young freshman quarterbacks to put the pressure on them.